What's up, Mena Nerds? This video is all about the Tri-Bubble Bongo, also known as the Gungan Bongo Submarine. It was manufactured by Oto Bunga Makin Cooperative, who grew coral into the shape of the hull, making the skeleton of each ship unique and individually handcrafted. They were grown to resemble underwater creatures that were known to have hard shells, dissuading most predators from attacking this craft, but the key word there is most. After the coral hardened, the hull was then filled with its electromotive field engine, which generated power from the water passing over specialized Gungan tech, which energized the repulsor lifts and powered the spinning tentacles at the rear. Most were crafted at a length of 15 meters, or 49 feet, making it one and a half times the length of an armored assault tank, while at 10 meters, or 33 feet across, it was nearly as wide as a tie advanced. An engine that harvests electricity from the water is some amazing technology, but it won't exactly impress anybody with its speed, topping out at 85 kilometers per hour, or 53 miles per hour, making it only one-tenth the speed of a Thai bomber, and slower than some jet skis here on Earth. So it's not bigoted at all to say that Gungans are a very slow people. Its name Tri-Bubble comes from the bubble projectors that made these three domes, which acted as windows when this ship went underwater. Let's take a look inside of this ship to see where everything was and how it all worked. Up front we have the driving rudder that would control the ship's movement, followed by a series of water quality sensors, important for their Gungan passengers that might want to jump out and go for a swim. More sensors encircled the cockpit, which contained room for a single pilot and two passengers. Both sides of this ship were used to carry cargo, with a combined weight capacity equal to a pair of dewbacks, and with this cutaway, we can see that the outer sections of the wings are filled with a series of oil-filled bulbs that were used to adjust the buoyancy of this ship by releasing oil into this chamber to lift and absorbing it back up in order to descend. Moving aft towards the fins, we can see the hydrostatic fuel generators, which directed energy back through the main power unit, driving these flexible tentacles, which themselves also collected energy by being covered in this hydrostatic tech. As for its history, the very first of these organic, coral-grown ships was believed to be made by a Gungan tribe known as the Bungo Makin Collective, but as the many different Gungan tribes came to be controlled by a central ruling council, the original shipwrights became the Oto Gungan Bonga Makin Collective, a name taken from the city in which they were based. Smaller single-person bongos were also produced, along with bigger hay blibbers, which were used like passenger liners. The Gungan army had a five-passenger militarized unit, and mono-bubble racing bongos made for a popular sport, while also paving the way for Gungan starships that were used to colonize Naboo's moon, Oma Daun. One was used to bring Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, and Jar Jar to Thede, and the last time we see one used was to escort a Star Speeder 1000 to a rebel hangar base that was located on Naboo. So that's it for its history, and the only cool behind the scenes fact is that there are a bunch of different technical issues with this ship. It's said that they added repulsor tech so that it could have an extra boost to get through the bubble shields of the Gungan cities, but one of the traits of these shields was that repulsor vehicles could not go through them. It's the same type of shields that were used during the Battle of Naboo, and the reason given for why the AATs didn't just slowly push through the shield and blast the Gungans to pieces is that they were repulsor vehicles and not walkers, so they had to send in the battle droids first. And the second major problem is this whole oil buoyancy thing. Of course, oil is less dense than water, so it will rise to the surface, and it seems like someone on the production team got a little silly with this fact. It's said that the pilot could release oil into these chambers on the wings, making this craft more dense so that it could submerge, and then soak the oil up to rise. But all of this oil would still be located inside of the ship, so there wouldn't be any difference in its buoyancy. If I'm on a sub and dump a whole bunch of oil on the floor, the sub is not any more or less buoyant than when it was oil in a barrel. I tried to think of a bunch of different ways to have this make sense, even when you consider the repulsor tech, but it really doesn't work, and it's an unnecessarily complicated version of what ballasts do on a submarine. So that's it for the Tri-Bubble Bongo, but most important of all, remember, a Star Wars ship is just supposed to look cool, and the Force will be with you, always.